Welcome back to Fun with Chat GPT for Cybersecurity. So, I thought in this video we would have some fun with some cybersecurity concepts. Let's just play along. I see Chat GPT just said they've got a new, brand new January 9th version, right? There's been some changes here, which is pretty slick. Let's see if something has changed, right? So, let's go ahead and figure out. Um, what the changes are and uh, will they work for us? So let's begin with some uh, URL fuzzing. Let's just see what we have. I can start by asking the question, uh, do you have a list of tools that I can use for URL fuzzing? Let's see what we got here. We got WFuzz, Burp Suite, OWASP Zap, really cool. Okay, that's nice. Dur Buster, uh, Fuzz Faster, you fool. That's a, that's a good one. Arjun, FuzzDB, BooFuzz, Sully, and Intruder. These are just a few examples of the tools. So let's say, let's say, you know what, explain um, URL fuzzing. Um, like I'm five years old. Or maybe I could put ELI5. Let's see what it says. Okay, so you imagine you have a toy box with lots of different toys in it. You want to find the toy that you like best. So you start picking up different toys and looking at them to see if you like them. That's kind of what a computer program call it a URL Fezzer does when it tries to find out the best web page on a website. It looks a lot like different pages by trying to find out different combinations of letters and numbers in the website's address. This is called the URL. And it keeps track of the pages that it finds that are the most interesting. Just like you might find your favorite toy, the program might find something that can help people who used the website or people who made it better. Okay, let's say um, now make it sound like I am uh, 18 years old. There we go. This is a method of testing the security of a web application by automatically sending a large number of malformed or unexpected input to the field or URL paths and parameters. Okay, so it's basically brute force testing. Yep, helps to identify potential vulnerabilities in the application. The goal of URL fuzzing is to discover any unexpected behavior or input validation flaws that could allow an attacker to access sensitive information execute arbitrary code or cause other malicious actions. It's automated, okay. Very good, all good information here. Let's say this, um, um, what uh, types of websites are most prone to URL fuzzing attacks? So interactive websites. Let's see if we can't uh, give it. At, let's see if we can't get it to give us some examples of some stuff here after this one finishes. Okay, so now we've got e-commerce websites. These types of sites typically have many forms for inputting information. Okay, content management systems. We can think of these as our WordPresses, our Joomla's, our Drupal's. Okay, social networking websites. Okay, custom web applications. All right, so very good. And I also want to say that it's important to note that any web application can be vulnerable to URL fuzzing attacks, regardless of the type of site. It is essential to regularly test and update your web application to prevent this type of attack. Fantastic. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Um, Give me an example of a successful uh, fuzzing 
attack for a uh, fictitious. I cannot spell this word. Okay, for a fictitious uh, WordPress site. So that's the example. Okay, that's how it uh, might work. I was looking for more concrete. Let's see if we can't uh, see if we can't get some code out of this thing here. Let's expand this. Let's expand this to maybe we can do a, a uh, pen testing here. Let's say okay, uh, write a brief penetration test report explaining uh, the URL fuzzing uh, attack vulnerability along with some recommendations. All right, I like that it's got the penetration report. This is the methodology. Mm, very high level. Let's see, very high level. Let's see. You know what we can do? I think we can, um, yeah, this is very, very high level. I'm going to come back with some actual uh, code right here, and I'm going to see if we can get it to go even further here. All right, let's see, let's see, let's uh, rewrite the um, penetration test example um, explaining this ICAR test script along with this code. Okay, so we're looking at the ICAR test script, but let's see if we can't get it to go farther. Let's do, um, let's try this. This is good, but high level. Can you get more granular with examples of how this could be exploited with detail. Now, if this doesn't work, what we can do is we can, let me try to do some Google dorking here. Yeah, this is not getting us too far, so we could call this one a bust. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad for a simple report, but you know, we want uh, we want something better here. Let's do this. Let's try, yeah, let's try, let's see. 
can you explain how to exploit um, the PHP juggling vulnerability in the following code? And I'm going to say if post password close bracket equals equals secret password close parentheses uh, quite double quotes close parentheses uh, and squirrely bracket dot 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 errata and then close whoops forgot my close pearly bracket Okay, so it's not bad. So that's pretty cool. It actually goes to, uh, gives us uh, a nice little script here. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was looking for. So in this case, the script sends two values for the password parameter, wrong password and secret password. Very cool. The vulnerable script compares the password parameter to the string, secret password. But since the parameter is an array, it will only compare the last value of the array secret password. Very good. Since the last value of the array matches the string secret password, the script will execute the code inside the curly braces, giving the attacker unauthorized access to the secret page. Right? So yeah, so what they're, they're even giving you recommendation, recommendations here. It's always good practice to validate input. Yes, that's very true and make sure that the input of the expected format. So, you know, let's go ahead and draw the logical conclusion here, right? Um, how would you um, sanitize or validate the input? Okay, using the is set function, you can use the is set function to check if a variable has been set and is not null. Very good. Awesome. Right, so that's pretty cool. So if I'm a web developer and I'm trying to make sure my code is hardened before it goes into production, I could use something like this, right, or uh, burp suite to, you know, make sure my code is good, you know, get it run by architecture, scan it before it goes into prod, and uh, to the fences we go. Very good. Use a validation library, okay? There are some PHP libraries for input validation, such as Respect Validation or Symphony Validator. Using a validation library can make input validation more maintainable, extensible, and testable. Awesome. It says, yeah, also make sure you do this on the server side. In addition, it's always a good ex practice to also validate data on the client side by using JavaScript or any other client side scripting language to prevent malicious data from being sent to the server. So that's awesome. That's what I was looking for. So really cool. We're able to uh, get uh, pretty far here. So let's, let's, let's try this. Write a Python script to exploit the previous vulnerability.
Hey, this is pretty gnarly, right? Okay. Yeah, do not try this at home. This is purely for educational purposes, but uh, I must say this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm impressed with this so far. You know, as a as a version one product here. But as you see from the beginning, we've done a lot of uh, cool stuff, right? We talked about it's got URL fuzzing in there. It's got tools that they recommend. I asked you to explain it to me as if I'm a kid, and then I asked the same thing as an 18-year-old. It does much better language, and then I'm asking it what types of websites are most prone to URL fuzzing attacks. I'm getting examples of a successful attack for a WordPress website. It said this one, you know, might might violate it one. It just talks about what it is. I don't really consider that too bad. We then, you know, have some plus or minuses when it comes to the penetration test report, right? It's kind of basic, you know, very high level here, but it could be useful if you wanted to save time. You would just, you know, plug in where it made sense for you. I tried to pivot to the ICAR file. Again, I didn't really do much with that, but that's okay. And then I was able to get it to actually trigger some behavior with the PHP juggling vulnerability which is which is really nice and uh, super cool here right and it gives you the example of how they could exploit it right and then I said okay well if they could exploit it how would we sanitize it and then boom I get some output here pretty snazzy I must say for my snazzy nav snazzy labs listeners out there and then finally I get it to actually write a script to exploit the previous vulnerability, which is pretty awesome here. So ChatGPT continues to impress me from an IT standpoint, from a cyber standpoint. And um, if you like this video, it gives it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I'll be able to see more out here. We got lots of more fun stuff that we are going to be playing around with as always ian trimble trimble tech i'll see you in the next one peace bye